Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1290. Hey, if you want to download this Excel file or the access file that goes along with this, click on the link below the video. Oh, we have an awesome video here. Craig says that he watched Excel Magic 1287 with the switch function. And in that video, we saw how to look up multiple reference lookup tables for VLOOKUP. And Craig said his commission tables are usually a single table downloaded from a database. So whereas with the switch, when we looked up multiple tables, our tables were separate tables and they were static. So we could put one, two, three different tables into the switch function. And the switch function would look up the right table for VLOOKUP. But look at this. Look at this. The tables are all stacked on top of each other. So if we have Bellin product over here for our commission rate, we need to look up in this first column and return the commission rate. If it's Aspen, similarly, we need to only get that table. And if we run into an item that does not have a table, we need to go to the default table, which would be right here. Not only are they going to be stacked up on top of each other? But when we refresh this later, since it's from a database, it might have new products. So what are we going to do? Well, in our VLOOKUP formulas here, we're going to have to create a dynamic range. Now, we're going to see two different formulas. And one of the formulas is absolutely beautiful. One of the formulas is the one Craig said, and then we'll see a different way to do it. But first, I actually want to delete this Alt-E-A-A -A to remove the content and the formatting. And I want to import from Access so we can refresh it when that Access Commission table updates. And everything up here should update also. Now we're going to go up to Data. And instead of using Get and Transform Power Query, we don't need to use anything fancy. I'm going to use the good old standby we've had for years, Get External Data. And I'm going to click on Access on the desktop. And there it is. I'm going to double click. Now, you may have a few other steps if you have multiple tables. But I only have one table in that database. I'm going to click OK. And there it's dumped as a table. Now, I want to name this table Table Tools Design or Properties or Alt-JTA. And there it is highlighted up here. I called it Access Com Table and Enter. Now, when we build our formulas over here, they will be pointing to the table name and the field name. I'm actually going to right click Format Painter and format those the same. Now, I'm going to convert this to a table also, because this is going to be dynamic, the whole thing. We're going to be adding extra records over here, and our commission will automatically update. Control-T to convert it to a table, and Enter. Alt-JTA, and I'm going to call this Sales Table, and Enter. Now, the first thing we're going to do in this column is we're going to use VLOOKUP and the Offset function to define a dynamic range. Then we're going to use VLOOKUP and the index function to define a dynamic range. Now, we're going to need a couple things for both the offset and index. We're going to need to know the start row for each one of these products. So Carlotto would be all the way down here, so the ninth position. Bellin would be the first position. Then we're going to need to know how many of each item in the table so we know the height of the table. All right, you ready? Looking something up and getting the relative position, that's easy enough. I'm going to say, hey, match, look up Carlota. And that's table formula nomenclature. At means relative cell reference in the product field in this row, comma. Look up array, Boop, there's the whole range I want to look. That's the table and the field name, comma. And since there are duplicates when I look up Carlota, I want to find the first one, so automatically exact match does that. Zero, close parentheses, Control Enter, double click and send it down. Now that would work, of course, if we didn't have a default table. When it runs into any boomerang that is not over in this table, it's going to give us NA. So we're going to use an awesome function that started in Excel 2013 and later, if NA. So when match delivers an NA, we can say what to put there in place of the NA. Now, I'm going to copy this match, because guess what? Comma, and the value if NA, I'm going to Control-V and simply 
highlight this reference right here and type in double quotes default, in double quote. So now when it can't find one of these names, it will look up default. And that's what the database uses to define that last table. Close parentheses, Control, Enter, double click and send it down. And so now anytime it sees whatever it is here, whatever name, it's going to count 13 down. And it will know from the top down, that's the starting position, Control Z. So our next step in defining this dynamic table, now that we have the position for Carlota, for example, the position would be 9, we need to say how tall it is. So we're simply going to count the criteria here, equals count ifs. And the criteria range, well, I just look through this whole table here. Our table formula nomenclature will show up, comma, and criteria. Well, let's just try this, putting our relative cell reference for this table in, close parentheses, Control, Enter, double click and send it down. Well, of course, it can't count any sunshines. So what are we going to do here? Are we going to put like an if or if and a with a match? You can't find it otherwise then no, no, watch this. And this is what's so cool about Craig's formula here. What we'd really like to do in criteria is obviously use this, except for when we get here, we'd like default. Well, guess what? This column is filled with all of the criteria we might use and the word default. We're just going to look up using index item from this column. There's our table formula nomenclature. And guess what? The row number, the information is already here. Nine will find Carlota. 13 will find default, close parentheses on the index. So inside of criteria one is this index looking up the item from here based on the number in the cell directly to the left. Control, Enter, double click and send it down. So if I hit F2 and come right here to criteria and F9 index, well, of course, that number nine says to find Carlo to here. But when we get down here, F2, come to criteria, and F9, no way. That 13 looked it up. So that is index function inside of the criteria. That's pretty cool. So now we have starting position and height. Now we're going to use equals offset. And offset will just define the range, and then we'll put offset inside of VLOOKUP. Now the reference. When you're defining a dynamic range, you have to say the starting position in which offset then starts to calculate the dynamic range. I'm going to click on the header. And notice it's table formula nomenclature. And with the double square brackets, that means it will be locked. It will always get the header for the sales field. Now that's the starting position. Now we simply comma rows. From that starting position, how many rows down or up, which would be a positive number or a negative number, do you want to go from that starting position? Hey, we already have that. It's 9, comma. From this starting position, how many columns to the left or to the right, adding or subtracting, do we want? We don't want to move at all. So leave that empty and comma. The height. We have the height of the table right there, comma. The width, it's always going to be 2, close parentheses, Control, Enter. It gives us a value error because it's delivering a range of values. So double click and send it down. Hey, let's just F2, F9, this first one. This is the Carlota. And sure enough, to get it right, 0, 0.1, 1,000, 0.2. 0, 1,000, 0.2. And by the way, this is array syntax, curly brackets. How's the array? You can always tell it's going over a column because comma means column, semicolon means go down a row. So that's working escape to revert back to whatever was in the cell. And let's come down here, F2, F9. Sure enough, that offset got exactly the right table for default, escape. Now we can simply F2. Before offset, VL tab, the lookup value, we're doing approximate match lookup to look up a sales value. So sales value, comma. The whole offset is our table array. We come to the end, comma. Column index, well, it's 
two columns, and the second column has the thing I want to go and get and bring back to the cell. So for column index 2, and we don't need to put this last argument in because the default is approximate match. So I close parentheses, and that will work. Control, Enter, double click, and send it down. And there it is looking up the right rate from the right table for each one of the products, including any product that doesn't have a table and has to use the default. All right, so that's offset. That is pretty beautiful. Let's see another way. Now, offset is a great function and sometimes is actually even more versatile than index for, for defining ranges. But offset is a volatile function. That just means it recalculates anytime you do something in the spreadsheet. We can use index function to define a dynamic range, and it is not volatile. Now, index is going to look up cell references. And remember, we have to look up the first cell in the table in the sales column. So I'm going to highlight the entire sales column, comma. Well, we already have the row number. That's going to be this start row. Now, let's just close parentheses on this in F9 to see what index is delivering. F9, well, of course, index is programmed to look up a value. So we're looking up Carlota, so it's seen that 0. Control Z, but watch this. How do you get index to look up a cell reference instead of a value? You put it into the context of a cell reference or a range. And colon tells index it has to look up a cell reference. Now, it won't quite show us yet until I put the second index. And now what do we have to look up? We actually have to look up the last cell in the table in the commission rates column, comma. And what do we need here? We actually need to go down 9, then add 4 and subtract 1. So for Carlota, we could go down 9. That would get us to there. But if we added 4, it would go 1, 2, 3, 4, which is one too many. So for row number, I'm simply going to say, hey, get the starting position plus how many are in the table? Minus 1. And that will work. Close parentheses. Now, index colon index will define a range. Control Enter, double click, and send it down. Now, let's F2, F9. And sure enough, the index for looking up Carlota gets the correct table. If I come down to the default, F2, F9, you got to be kidding me. Both offset and this index formula are dynamically looking up the correct table, including this default table. Now we can simply put VL tab. We're looking up the sales amount, comma, the table array. That's that entire dynamic range defined by the index function. Then I come to the end, comma, two, close parentheses, control, enter double click and send it down. That is pretty amazing. And in either case, we could actually copy that, copy both of those, and paste them into the appropriate sections. So we had a single column. And then finally, if we needed to multiply the whole VLOOKUP times the sales amount to get the actual commission amount, that would work also. Now we want to test this. I'm going to come down here. This is a table. So I simply type. 2,541 tab. And this is a quad, which is not one of our tables. And sure enough, it looked up 2,500. It went bumped into this one, brought the 3% from the default table back. But now, I'm going to hit pause. Now I'm back. I went and changed the database. Now I'm going to come over. And because I imported this, I can right click Refresh. And sure enough, look at that. And did the formulas update? You bet they did. So in this video, we saw how to import something from Axis. It could have just as easily been from Excel. We have commission tables 1, 2, 3, 4, and a default. And then we had to do lookup for multiple tables. And we saw how to create a dynamic range with offset and with two index functions. All right, it's awesome hanging out on our online team. Thanks to Craig for this question and this awesome formula here. We'll see you next video.